We are in the heat of the NBA offseason, but Paul George keeps the content rolling, having new Sixers rookie Jared McCain on the podcast P Show, where he opened up on a variety of topics, including his process of coming to the Sixers, the interview process that went down, workouts beforehand, his time at Duke, and plenty more that I do want to get into in this specific episode here. So I'm going to start off just acknowledging, pretty cool how the rookie and the vet both sitting down from the Sixers team to chop it up. We know we had Tyrese Maxey on the podcast P Show already, and kind of cool to get a true window into the Jared McCain just personality the way that he is able to speak like I have a, a video up on this channel already I did personally get a chance to speak to Jared out in Las Vegas while at the NBA Summer League there and my impression then was a lot what came from this same interview here and the number one thing that I would just like to say is he's a normal guy that I don't know who he is in everyone's head that we, I know what comes with it with the TikTok dancing with the nails painting that I think there are you know people not exactly sure how to feel about everything but he's just like any uh, any other traditional normal guy. And I think that was my biggest takeaway from this episode as a whole is he's a guy that, you know, you can chop it up with, have good conversation. And it was cool that they dove into a variety of topics. And those TikToks and those nails painted were at the forefront of the conversation dating right when this episode opened up here. So I'm going to dive into specifically what was said. And my final point before I shift into the exact quotes here is I do feel bad for Jared to an extent that I know these are obviously choices that he makes and he has to deal with. But it does feel like every time he's at the forefront of the media, those are the first things that are asked about it talk to me about the tiktoks talk to me about how you became this person this eccentric person on the court the way that you present yourself when i my takeaway from listening to him talk is he wants to talk hoops man he wants to be asked about are you working on your three-point shot i thought there felt like a genuine like excitement when talking about the summer league the spacing of the nba how he can help the sixers team while most of it it was him brushing off these other comments but to get into exactly what was said here there are, are a couple quotes shout out to the Paul George team, which did email me those over to me with some very specific directions for how to reference them. But it starts out, he was asked about being referenced as a uh, TikTok star rather than a basketball player. And Jared's quote is, quote, I get called TikToker more than basketball player by far, especially in college. People would be outside camera, no indoor, just uh, just wait outside. But it, uh, it was all people just there for my tickets, for my TikToks. They're just supporting me. I built that platform and it's cool and they that they even watch my TikToks. But sometimes I'm like, damn, am I good at basketball? Do y'all even know I play basketball? And then Jackie Long, shout out to Paul George's co-host, said, I like this because now you just have a lot of proving, uh, proving to do, P proving people wrong to do, man. You know what I'm saying? You can just, all the people that think I'm just a TikTok or you can't do this and the people that that your mama and daddy want to talk to you can just prove them wrong and then jared said quote that's my favorite part throughout my whole life or throughout the social media part of my life everybody calls me tiktok on the court as a diss and i never really thought of it as a diss so i do like kind of a little bit of the personality here and to dive deeper into this there's a couple other questions that he was asked about kind of his social media preference and what was or presence and what was made of it during the pre-draft process and the question that jackie long asked here was quote I want to know how often your social media presence was brought up during your draft interviews. And Jared said, quote, yeah, pretty much every one. Uh, everyone oh man they they didn't talk about my uh my nails though which i was kind of surprised about my agent had told me to be ready for that and i was ready for that but yeah they talked about my social media a lot of stuff and they just wanted to know how you grew up and your family and everything i just remember the question that i got asked was crazy and then he went on to tell kind of a story of he did not reveal what team it was that asked him but basically making a joke about what if there's a bunch of moms that are walking and doing yoga here how would you react and jared i don't think really knew how to take that one nor would i, I don't give him any points off for that one there but he did reference the Sixers interview process specifically he was asked directly by Paul George and he called he referred to that as the chillest interview that he did during the process that it was really normal there were no out-of-the-box questions and really all that the Sixers were trying to get to is talked about your family life talk about how you grew up what's important to you your hobbies outside basketball and it does seem like Jared's a really grounded kid that he does have things under control off the court he has his process of keeping himself in order talk about working with a sports psychologist that he did during his time at Duke a bunch of journaling that he does does and manifestation that has really kind of guided him on this journey to reach this point and a dude that I don't want to get lost in this entire conversation can straight up play basketball and to just throw a little reminder for what this dude can do on the court we're talking about his season at Duke that he averaged 14.3 points per game five rebounds which I think is really impressive for a guard his size here and the thing that's going to be his defining characteristic on the Sixers team shot 41.4 percent from three on 5.8 three-point attempts per game he's a nice combination of efficiency and high volume there and that is going to be his role that that will be his sticking point in this team 
It also, the way that they did bring back Kyle Lowry and brought in Reggie Jackson, to me, it's kind of clear that I think they view Jared McCain a little bit more of the archetype in a Buddy Heald replacement and less of that true traditional backup point guard. Now, I'm pretty optimistic about his instincts as a playmaker and just an overall basketball player in the long haul, but you got to kind of give a guy one job at first and then gradually put more and more on his plate. And for Jared McCain, I think I'll be shooting right off the get-go. But I did want to dive into a little bit more of what was said. Uh, this quote I thought was especially cool from Jared here in which he was asked about remaining authentic to himself and how he blocks out the negative comments he receives on social media. And Jared said, quote, I mean, that's how I've been raised. My brother's really positive. My mom is always smiling. She's five feet and she's always smiling no matter what. I feel like that's where I get it from. Just how I was raised. And once I started doing everything in the social media, I just became like, that's who I am. I'm authentic to myself and being joyful, having fun with life. A lot of people take this basketball stuff so serious. And at certain times, it is at certain times, but I just like to have fun with it. That's what I'm playing at my best. And then outside the court, I just do whatever, whatever it is. If I'm dancing, doing whatever, painting my nails. I know everybody has certain opinions and everything, but I'm just going to be myself. And I've always prided myself on this and it got me to the NBA. So I'm just really grateful every time. And Paul George chiming in and digging a little deeper saying, I do got to ask you a little bit about that because obviously the social media, the media is the media, right? Everybody's got something to say. Everybody's got an opinion on shit and how you deal with it. Um, on your bur bumper, blah, 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 they go on. And Jared replies to say that. Yeah, I mean, at first it was tough. I was like, I'm just trying to spread positivity. And then people are hating, saying whatever, everything in the game. It was crazy. But at a certain point, I'm just like, they're either insecure about themselves or just projecting something that maybe they're feeling, they're hiding whatever it is in themselves. And they're just trying to throw in my opinion and get a reaction out of you. So really nice example of another head on his shoulder. And I got to find a way to make that font bigger for the next video here. But the bottom line is I do like how McCain has his head screwed on, right? A good head on his shoulders. This is not a guy that I think is going to be bothered by the bright lights of the NBA or the increased media presence here. I don't want to get lost that this man chose the tough path, that he knew exactly who he was. He's been painting his nails since high school. He's been doing TikTok since high school and he said i want to go to duke university i want to play in front of the cameron crazies i want to be one of the most hated teams in the entire country when it comes to college basketball and the winningest program as mccain was quick to point out on this podcast as well and he did have another funny line that i think a lot of us are eager to see this relationship between tyrese maxey and jared mccain kind of come together here so i did tweet out the clip for this you guys can check this out on my twitter if you want to here but jared mccain revealed that tyrese maxey wasn't rocking with doing a tiktok with him but the two have already worked out and golfed together on the podcast p show and how particularly this went down here is he was asked the question of um would you do a, a TikTok with another NBA player? Again, I do feel like they hit on the TikTok stuff way too heavy in the podcast overall, as is typically the experience with the Jared McCain conversation. But they did ask him, would you do another TikTok with a current NBA player? And he was like, yeah, of course. Like, I, I would do one with, with you, Paul George. I don't know if you want to do that. And he's like, I know Maxi wasn't rocking with it. And I wish they dug in a little deeper to get the story here. It was kind of a throwaway content, a throwaway comment there. But he said that, yeah, Maxi wasn't rocking with it, which... Just shout out Tyrese, man. He's just the best, and I do think that's very funny. I think that there was uh, probably a pretty funny story that went along with it, so we'd love to hear that at some point down the line. But kind of cool that they are already in the gym together. They've been golfing together, and who knows how things play out in the long run. There's still questions as far as the basketball fit. There's not going to be a ton on Jared McCain's plate from day one with the Sixers team. We know how in win-now mode they are, and it is going to take the veteran doing the interviewer in Paul George or guys like Joel Embiid himself and, of course, the young superstar of the franchise, Tyrese Maxey, to each carry a heavier load for this Sixers team if they are going to achieve the goals that we all hope to and be championship contenders this year. But I do think it was a nice, it was cool gesture from Paul George to have McCain on. Now that is Tyrese Maxey and Jared McCain, two young Sixers guards, showing their face on the podcast from playing with their new teammate. Cool to get a little window into his personality, and I really liked everything that I did hear from Jared McCain there. And I do want to hear from you guys as well. So let me know if you tuned into that episode. I do totally recommend checking it out. I think it was cool to just see them chop it up and get a window into the personality of each of these guys. And I cannot wait for the season to actually tip off and for these guys to be playing basketball together. But let me know any takeaways that you think I missed from that podcast. Your thoughts on Jared McCain as a whole. If your opinion of him has shifted at any point throughout this, make sure you're smashing that subscribe button, dropping a like. And I'll be talking to you next time right here on Sixers Digest. Peace.